certain parts, or right? That, that, and, and that's us sometimes. If we do not comprehend or use salah properly, if I pray and you know we speak about fifth part of it, you know salah is beyond. There's a seminar called Beyond Motions, right? It's beyond the movement. Is my you know um, anybody knows Dr. Khurram Murad? Okay, so if you know Dr. Khurram Murad is one of the great teachers and. and uh, he died several years back in Britain. He's originally from Pakistan, but he lived a lot of years in, in the UK. And he's one of the Murabis, one of the great teachers in the Islamic movement. He wrote a book, it's called, for those, if you like any, any book about spirituality, really small, good to read, beautiful, very practical, it's called In the Early Hours. In the Early Hours. Very beautiful book. So he gives this example about, you know, when, when uh, you know, whenever there is, you know, when there is, when the Quran is recited, he's giving this example. Usually, the Quran should make the heart soft. And he says that the impact of the Quran is people will start crying when they hear the words, they feel impacted or touched, and so on and so forth. So he gives this example. If, do you see ever see a fire without smoke? Difficult, not right? fire without smoke will not work. So it gives this example of this water, you know, of a river, uh, um, waterfall, is going down on, on a soft soil. So when it goes down on that soil, what happens? That soil becomes very moist, right? And you see vegetation around it, and the water will, well, keep it rolling. But it says, about if this water falls onto a stone, what will happen? might get wet a little bit, but it's not moist. And then what the water what happens to the water? It's 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 splashed all over. Because he said he gives that example to the heart. He's co he compare that to the heart. If our hearts are very rigid, very rugged, and the Quran and Salah is not making any difference. That's because they're so you know, we accumulated so many sins. They became so hard, they're not soft anymore. They can't even, you know, they don't reject the bad nor accept the good. How you will you have difficulty learning or gaining anything from, from, from this part. You know, from, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says if someone, you know, and he gives that example, if someone is bathing five times a day and is not benefiting from their salah, they're not really reducing their foul language or uh, you know the things that haram to look at, or they improving also their ibadat and their rituals getting near Allah and near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you gotta question not the water but the user. How do you use it? Is it done on time? Is it are they prepared properly? Are they do do they do it consciously? Do they think when they say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest, you know, is it true do they mean it or not? Did they make wudu properly? You know? Did they dress properly? Did they say to themselves, was it did someone come to pray, you know, yeah, basketball game and it also do you think someone is going to gain anything from their salah? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Or, you know, you have two blackberries and one eye phone and one eye shoes and one eye this and one eye that. One. <laughs> jingle bell, jingle. Do you think someone is going to be, you know, concentrating in their salah? Most likely not. Or praying in front of a TV and then you watch the screen. <laughs> right? Go. Right? Or praying in front of a mirror, hijab. See that? It's difficult. You can't because we put so many obstacles for us to concentrate on doing so. Sometimes, you know, uh, praying, uh, just I'm going to need to pray dollar. Just give me two minutes. Two minutes. MashaAllah. So next time, like, minute and 40 seconds. I'm going to make it shorter, inshallah. Next time, like, 30 seconds, I'll be done, inshallah. Right? The way we pray sometimes, we can't. Like someone, Bismillah, Bismillah, And then you have, no, nah, or you have this, move it. Right, and then they go, as of them, like, well, break dancing or something. You can't attain it. You can't, you can't attain for sure, right? You can't benefit if you pray too fast. You will not reach that state of tranquility. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what the amazing part is. How many times do you, what, what should we do when we do Rukhul We should do what? Say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many times? Three times, right? Right? 
But you look at what the Prophet Muhammad said, you know, he one person came, he didn't pray properly. So he told him, uh, he told him, pray, pray again. He said, you didn't pray properly, pray again. So the guy goes up and the Prophet told him, he didn't pray properly. And he goes up and prays. And he finishes telling the Prophet. The Prophet tells him, you didn't pray properly, pray again. So he does that a second time. Then he does that third time. The Prophet tells him, still don't pray again. And then he says, oh Prophet of Allah, I don't know anybody. I, I, I mean, I did my best. I don't know. He said, so teach me. Tell me how. You know, if your friend tells him, oh, you didn't pray properly. What do you know? My mom taught me this, right? <laughs> right? So he tells him, no, you didn't. He said, teach me, oh Prophet of Allah. I said, if you want to pray, you got to make all the ones done this way. He said, I did that. And when you, when you want to pray, you got to face, you know, the khibla. I did that, and he did that. You say, Allah Akbar, and he did that. And you recite Al-Fatiha, and he did that. And you recite, uh, you know, the Quran, and he did that. And then you say, Allah Akbar, and he did that. And when you go to the court, what did he tell him? 